Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is not Ian Sands, and this, of course, is Learn How to Edit Stuff. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Ian, you got a pretty nice home office set up, and I like what you're doing with the wood in the back, but how do you know it hasn't been a green screen this entire time? It's not, it's real, but what's also real is the Roto Brush inside of After Effects. Have you used it? It's pretty sick. You can easily, easily, rotoscope somebody out of a scene and replace the background with something else. If you don't have a green screen, this is a nice way to do that if you need to do that. It's not very common these days. Rotoscoping things out is usually for more like VFX intensive projects, but if for some reason you need to rotoscope yourself or somebody else out of a scene and put them into another scene, the Adobe After Effects Roto Brush will help you. Also, it's free. It comes with After Effects, but you don't have to pay extra for it because I know you guys are like, I don't want to spend. It's free. It comes with After Effects, so use it. So why don't you go grab yourself a clip, any clip. Try the one in the video description below if you want. Same one that we're going to be working on today or get your own. I don't care. Either way, open up Adobe After Effects because we're getting started. Okay, kiddos, grab your clip. If you downloaded the one from the video description or whatever clip you have, why don't you drag it into After Effects and then just drag it right down here onto this new composition button and boom, it will automatically create a composition for you. That's the exact length of the clip. And then once you've done that, we're gonna very simply just double click on the clip. It will open the clip in its own layer window. And then we can come right up here to this little human and brush icon, which is the Roto Brush tool. So you're gonna click on that and then you're gonna quickly draw an outline kind of around the subject that you want to mask out. A very rough outline, and you can see After Effects does a pretty good job. Now let's go over some of the controls. If you hold down Control on your keyboard and then click and drag up and down, it will increase or decrease the size of the brush. I like to keep mine uh, pretty small, just about there. And let's zoom in real quick, and I will show you how to add and subtract from the roto. So clicking and dragging and just kind of painting in will add, and if you hold down Alt, you can remove. So if you go a little bit too aggressively on one area, like see right here, my ear, I can just quickly go over it with the remove roto tool and uh, we can kind of even it out that way. So now we're gonna go back in here and just kind of paint the areas of the scene that it is not getting. So we'll get the back of this chair here as well. And besides that, it's looking pretty good. The top of my hat, I feel like this is gonna be a problem throughout the whole thing, like just this little top portion right here. But we're gonna do our best to make it look good, which I think right about there looks pretty good if you ask me. So once you've gone and done your initial first outline, the second thing I want you to do is come down here to this little timeline where all these little arrows are pointing over to the right and grab the end of it and just drag it all the way over. And this is the area in which the roto is gonna be taking place and you want it to go over the duration of the entire clip. And now once you've done that, we are ready to rock and roll, but not first without going over the different options. So we got this thing over here, which is gonna show you just a black and white alpha, and you can click on it and it'll show you the transparent background there. The one right next to it is the toggle alpha boundary. So that's how you get that on and off, and then this one's just the black and white. And then the one right next to that is a color fill, so you can kind of see what's going on in the back and er any areas that you may be missing. Like down here, I didn't even see this, but like this edge of the chair, we may want to just try to grab. There you go. And this view will definitely help you find those little inconsistencies. But those are kind of the three main ones. I like to use just the regular outline for myself. It's just a lot easier to deal with over time. And then once you draw your initial outline, let's come right over here to the effect controls and make sure that your contrast is set above 50. I think the default is 50. I like to go a little bit higher to get those little nitty gritty details in there. That's just me, but you guys can leave it at 50 or 60 or 70 or 80. I have mine at 80. Hey, let's keep going. So now we're gonna hold control and hit the right arrow key on your keyboard and it's going to go frame by frame and After Effects is going to analyze the first initial outline that you did to continue the outline as you go farther and farther into the clip and you can tell kind of where you are in the process by this little green progress bar over here on the top side and all of these ones in here in where the arrows are have all been rendered already. So the first initial outline that we did at the beginning is actually very important because After Effects is gonna use that as a jumping off point to continue all the rest of the rotos. So I'm just gonna keep hitting the right arrow and holding down control and looking for any weird inconsistencies. And as you get to frames where things move in and out of the roto, what you're gonna do is just kind of paint it in and then keep going. So if I hit control in the arrow, it should pick up my hat now and now it's continuing that line. So that's really nice. And also, if you do have movement in your scene like I do, you can come over here and just click on this Use Motion Blur checkbox. That will just help a little bit with any moving parts and it'll grab it a little bit nicer. All right, so this is looking pretty good so far. So I'm gonna continue to hit Control and the right arrow, making sure that all of the things are still in frame. As you can see, it's getting my ear and my hat really nicely. After Effects is doing a really nice job at grabbing this stuff and it's not really missing anything. 
Now, if you can imagine going frame by frame and having to redraw masks and all the little pins on the mask, that would just be, this is so much better. And I'm gonna keep going, keep hitting the arrow, going to the right, going to the right, still going to the right. The outline still looks good. Nothing's jumping out at me as being super weird. Getting some weirdness in the hat now. And it doesn't have to be exactly perfect, and I'll show you guys in just a minute why it doesn't have to be, but as detailed as you can be in this early process is gonna be extremely helpful. We're going all the way to the end till the very last frame. And we're there. All right, so once you think that you have a really nice outline on your roto, the next thing you're gonna do is just come over here to this freeze button and you're gonna click freeze. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna freeze the roto in frame and analyze every single frame that you just went through and manually added or subtracted. Now what After Effects is gonna do is kind of glue it all together and freeze it down so you can play it back seamlessly and you're not like maxing out your CPU or GPU trying to watch your rotoscope. So we're doing this in real time. This is real riveting, exciting stuff, guys. Uh, I'm gonna fast forward. And we're done, amazing. So now what we're gonna do is come right up here and go back to our composition roto clip. And now as you can see, it is now an alpha layer and there's nothing behind it. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna straighten out a lot of these lines. So you can kind of see it's looking a little wavy and a little weird around our edges and that's very easy to fix. All we have to do is come over to the reduce chatter slider and I'm gonna slide it all the way up to 100. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna even out the lines a little bit more and coupled with the next two things we're gonna do, which is feather it a little bit more. So I'm gonna feather it to 15 instead of five. And I'm gonna shift the edge to negative 10. And what that's gonna do is come inward from the outline and kind of smooth out any like weird artifacting that you may have going on around the outside edges. And it'll just look overall a bit smoother. So let's try to play this. So it's actually doing a really nice job. It's getting the movement of the hat really well. If I was being super, super nitpicky, I can come in here and stop it at this frame where a little bit of my hat gets carved out. And if you guys ever wanna go back in and redo a portion of the roto, just double click on your clip yet again, and then you have to unfreeze it. And since we're already at the frame time that I wanna consider, you can see that this render outline is going all the way over and it's stopping right where our playhead is, which is totally fine. And then I can come in here and I can very quickly just paint that outside edge and get it a little bit smoother and then unfortunately we'll have to freeze it again to get it back to where it was. And then once it's done freezing, we can come back over into our composition. It will be the exact same frame that we left it off at. And now this is looking a lot smoother for my tastes. And for an added bonus in this tutorial, I'll show you how to drop out the background just like you saw in the beginning of this video. It's very, very simple. What we're gonna do is click on this clip, hit Control D on the keyboard to duplicate, click on our bottom clip and delete the roto brush effect. And now that's gonna bring back the background in our scene. And then very simply come up here to the rectangular mask tool, double click on that. It will put a mask around the very outside edges of your frame. Then we're gonna tool down the mask properties, set a mask path keyframe, and then come over, you know, a little bit over here maybe. And we're gonna click on this top point, hold down shift, click on this other point up here, and then click and hold shift and drag down to the bottom, which is gonna animate the mask off screen. So now it's just kind of animating in a downward direction, just like so. And then finally, we'll come up to layer, new, solid. You can make it whatever color you want because we're gonna add a gradient ramp. So come over here to our effects and presets and type in ramp and drop in gradient ramp right on that layer. And what we'll do is we'll start it off at kind of a chroma key greenish and then we'll end it off at a darker chroma key greenish. So it gives it a little bit of gradient fall off towards the bottom, which makes it look slightly more realistic. This doesn't look realistic at all. You could also just drop in an image of a green screen behind the back and it would work just the same. And we'll drag that layer down below our bottom clip. So now this wipes out into a green screen. Yes, you could use this technique to roto somebody out of a scene and put them in another scene, but this is also very useful if you're trying to put text behind somebody instead of individually masking each frame, if, especially if somebody's moving. This works super easily. So let's check this out. I'm gonna create a new text layer. I'm gonna say, wow, text. And look, it's already behind me because that text layer is below our roto clip. So I can very easily move this text seamlessly behind myself. I can do all my scales. I can do all of my animations exactly the same. And it will stay perfectly behind myself even when I'm moving. 
So this is a great way to kind of do environmental text behind your subject or do something cool that's kind of happening in the background, an explosion maybe if you wanted to do some action stuff, you can do that too. So if you haven't used the Roto brush inside of After Effects before and today was maybe your first time, congratulations. Hopefully you learned something new. It's a really cool and powerful tool. And if you're not used to using it, try to use it for something you wouldn't think to use it for, right? Like putting text behind somebody, like try that. Or if you need to Roto somebody out and put them in another scene, you can do that as well. But try to use it for other things that you think it shouldn't be used for. And then that way you can just like let your creativity flow out and do some really cool stuff with this very simple free tool. That about does it today for me. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you haven't, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also check out the last video that you missed. We do them here weekly at Learn How to Edit Stuff. If you want to get in touch with me at Naughty and Sands on the social medias, hit me up, ask me to do a tutorial, and I might just do that. Subscribe, check out the last video, and I will see you next time.